Hey everyone, welcome to Web Sleuths YouTube Live. My name is Trisha Griffith. So happy that you're here with us, with me by my side, the ever trusty, amazing, insightful one, executive producer extraordinaire. And uh, we got lots to talk about tonight. Yes, it, you chuckle when, when I say that, but it's true. You're extraordinarily extraordinarily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Four Sons Mom had a comment that says, The Thora is sending well wishes and prayers your way. You deserve some healthfulness. I hope you're okay, The Thora. We love you. And uh, I hope things are going well for you, my dear. I see you're in chat. I'm happy to see you. So just uh, please keep in touch because we love you and we love everybody here tonight. Okay, I'll tell you what, we're going to get right to it. Um, here's the deal. So I was watching Nate Eaton at East Idaho News, and they are picking the uh, jaws, slowly but surely picking the jaws for the Chad Daybell trial. Now, uh, they only got like one juror through today, and it, so it was a pretty rocky start. People were late. The judge was late. All of that happens. It all happens. But there was kind of an interesting story that one of the jurors told. Now, what told, what they're doing is, they're trying to get 50 jurors and then they whittle it down. And then I don't know if it's at 50 that the, that the lawyers can do this it might be at 50 or it might be a little less, but at some point when they get this group of jurors, that's when the lawyers can just say, I don't want this one. I don't want, they can just strike them off. They don't have to have a reason. They can just strike them off. Now they have X amount of strikes that they can make. OK, but that's that's what they're going to do when they get to this this group of 50 that are potential that could possibly serve on a jury. Um, then they'll whittle them down. I think I heard Nate say to 18, which would be uh, what, 12 jurors and six alternates. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to wait and see. I do apologize. I, I have a bit of a runny news. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You know, if I was British, I'd stuff this little Kleenex up my sleeve. I always thought that was disgusting. But that's what my mom did and all her family. I don't know. I have a runny nose. That's very strange. Huh, bug. Is it you? Is it you, Authram Text, Bug Nugget the first? You make him a nose run? No, you're not. It's not the doggies. I don't oh. care how allergic I was to animals. I would always have dogs and cats. And any other beast I could find that would want to live with me. Okay. So anyway, tonight. Joror. Is that what Nancy Grace says? Joror? I think it's something like that. Joror. I say jury. I just talk about the jury. And jurors. I say jur Because I'm from Utah. That's how we pronounce it. Jurors. J-E-R-S. Jurors. Jurors. People that sit on a jury. So anyway. Um. There was an interesting story. This um, woman, who I'm sure is going to be excused, uh, had a very traumatizing incident a couple of decades ago. Uh, she had to put uh, somebody, somebody caught on fire. I think she said her brother caught on fire and she had to put him out. And so this would be a very triggering case for her. I mean, think about it. They, we know what they tried to do to Tylee. They tried to burn her and what was left were some just horrible uh, pieces of Tylee that they put in a bucket. I mean, it is so grotesque. And so this poor juror, 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 uh, had, uh, you know, it was very, very traumatizing for her. So you never know what you're going to get in a jury pool, pool like that. So anyway, that's about it. Uh, Keith Morrison, Nate Eaton did an interview with Keith Morrison. It was kind of funny. He announced he was doing an interview with Keith and a whole bunch of people thought Keith Morrison was at the courthouse. So they all run down there trying to, you know, stalk him and find him. <laughs> like, I would have done. I'd be like, oh, Keith Morrison. I'd be drooling and all happy. And uh, it, uh, he wasn't, he was in California, but I think he's coming out for the trial. So, woohoo. Okay. So that's where we're, we are at. Day two, jury selection for jurors for the Chad Daybell trial. Again, I, I'm just shocked that, uh, and let, two things, unless 
the prosecution did not offer uh, Chad Daybell any sort of deal, and they may not have, because uh, their death penalty is on the table here, as it should be. So let's say hypothetically that um, they did offer him some sort of, hey, plead guilty and we'll take the death penalty off the table. I don't know why he thinks going to trial is going to work unless he's delusional and thinking that he can, you know, do his little magical crap and just kind of jettison away in his portal. But uh, the other thing is, I think we know what the defense is going to be. It was all Alex and Lori. And uh, he had to go along with it or his family was going to be killed. And look what they did to Tammy. That was a warning. I, you can yeah. just, you know, you can just hear his big, fat, stupid head. Whatever is left in that head of his. Got it so huge, like a big storage shed right on his shoulders with nothing in it. And I just, uh, I don't know, I get so disgusted just looking at him. I get so angry. I just get so angry. Yeah. I think Lori Daybell Vallow has a, a mental illness, has delusion problems. Doesn't mean she shouldn't be in prison for the rest of her life. She should never get out. Uh, but I think Chad Daybell is, uh, I think he believes this crap. I think he thinks he's that powerful, you know. And I think he believed that he deserved the cute, blonde cheerleader wife. He was done with Tammy. He was going to send Tammy off to the other side to take care of the children. Because, you know, that's what Tammy did. She took care of the children. She took care of the house. She took care of the job. She took care of the money. She did everything because Chad was too stupid and lazy to do it. Sorry. I get I get childish and start calling him names because I'm so angry because I have no, no way to lash out at him other than to do that. So I, I will continue to do that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about these two missing women. Now, uh, Insightful One and I were talking beforehand about this, and let me um, let me grab this information here just a moment. Uh, this is very scary, very scary. Uh, Veronica Butler, she's 27, and come on, load up, baby. Oops, wrong one. Do, 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 do. Anyway, um, Veronica Butler, 27, and Jillian Kelly, 39. Uh, their vehicle was abandoned in Oklahoma. So hang on. I just need to grab the article that I had. Where did it go? De, 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 de. Here we go. And then I'm going to tell you some inside stuff that we found out today. Okay, so as from Court TV, now police say they're looking for two women whose empty car was found on the side of the road in rural rural Oklahoma and what they're calling a suspicious disappearance. Veronica Butler, 27, and Jillian Kelly, 39, were traveling together to pick up children, but never made it to their location, according to a missing persons advisory issued by the Oklahoma Highway Patrol. It doesn't say whose children they were picking up, but Kansas Station WK, uh, KWCH reported uh, Kelly was traveling with Butler to pick up Butler's children. Okay. So Veronica Butler is the younger person. She's 27 and uh, Jillian Kelly is 39. So a Facebook post from Willow Christian Church in Indianola, Nebraska, described Kelly as the wife of its new minister and sister-in-law of church of a church member. Church said it held a gathering Sunday night to pray for the missing women. Uh, Anyway, their vehicle was found abandoned near Highway 95 and Road L in rural Texas County, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation said in a statement. Now, just because it says Texas County doesn't mean it's in Texas. It's in Oklahoma. I don't get it either. Texas and Oklahoma, it gets all discombobulated and mixed in together. I can't figure it out. I don't want to. It frightens me. But there's a little more. It's not clear when the vehicle was found, but the Texas County Sheriff's Department on Saturday asked the Oklahoma State Bureau of, Bureau of Investigation for help. Okay, um, so I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put the link up here to this story, and then we're going to put the link up to the discussion on Web Sleuth that has all the information, you know, the pictures, who you can call, all of that. Okay, but let me tell you something interesting that happened today. 
so our, our Web Sleuth members are smart and fast. WebSleuth.com, the best true crime discussion forum in the universe. Um, they went to the courthouse in Oklahoma and found divorce documents. And I believe the documents were for Butler. And if they were if they were her children, that's who the divorce documents were for were, were for were for. Um, and it was very salacious. There was a lot of charges being flung back and forth, essay charges, sexual abuse charges. It was ugly. Well, just as people are starting to read these documents, poof, they disappear off the uh, Oklahoma courthouse website. Now, some people did download them. Let me tell you my thoughts on this. Obvious, okay, if it is a suspicious disappearance, there's a motive. And we know that child custody fights like this can lead to murder very often. Just think of the case in Ohio where they went around house to house to house and murdered everybody just to get custody of this one little child. However, and just because there are documents that have some um, shocking facts to them, it doesn't mean it has anything to do with the disappearance. And how would that help finding them by putting these documents out there? I'm not saying we won't at some point if they ever come back up, but uh, they have been removed. Um, and there, we're allowing the people on WebSleuth to discuss the fact that there was a contentious custody uh, issue going on. Some of the things that I read and I have no way to know if these are true or not, but that, uh, hang on, that Veronica was traveling with Jillian to go pick up her kids and Jillian was there as some part of a supervised custody situation. Again, I have no way to uh, tell you if that's true or not. Uh, we're still looking into it. But just know there was a custody battle going on that was very ugly. Here's the thing. We don't know if it's been settled or not. It could have been settled. Uh, we didn't get the documents long enough to read them. Now, I know people have downloaded them and we've asked them um if they could send us a copy so we could figure out what's going on here. Right. But, but mainstream media certainly hasn't done anything to get them. I'm, sh I'm just shocked. I'm always surprised when, you know, people on web sleuth are like days ahead of the mainstream media. It's like, you would think that would be the first place they would go is to go look up court documents to see what was going on. So again, we don't know. Did they run out of gas? Did their car break down? Uh, did they pull over just to use the bathroom and somebody snuck up behind them? Is the custody situation a part of this disappearance? Is it a random, horrible uh, attack from a, a deranged stranger? We just don't know. Now, what, what did you find out, Insightful One? Oh, honestly, right now, I, I haven't found out that much because... I have that document, but I'm trying to figure out how the gentleman and the document is related. I don't know if he's related, if it's Veronica's ex or what it is. I'm not sure. And I'm trying to figure that out right now. You have a document and it has to do with an arrest of somebody uh, to do with a gun and things like that. Again, yes. it's somehow connected, but even if it is connected to these women, does that mean it's connected to the disappearance? You know, uh, that's where right. that that's where I have a moral dilemma here, because right. I want I'm not, to go ahead. I'm not going to use the person's name, but mm -hmm. this person involved somehow. They were had a a felony, and then after they received a felony, they were in possession possession of a firearm. Now, supposedly, they were supposed to turn themselves into rehab but we don't know if they have yet. Uh, well, that's interesting you say that because on, um, I think one of the court documents, it talked mm -hmm. about somebody being in rehab. So I bet that's, 
I bet it's the same. I bet it's the same. Then what I can say is if he did go into rehab, then he probably wouldn't have been out during this time. So I'm trying to find out all this information. Right, right, exactly. And again, we just don't know. So if anybody from websleuths.com is going, oh, oh, Trisha Griffith, the manager of websleuths, she's saying it, so I can go post it. No, 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 no. Um, we, I say things here that we do not allow on websleuths.com, so just FYI. Okay, you have to follow the rules on web sleuths, and that's mainstream media only, law enforcement source only, that type of thing. So anyway, it's uh, it's been a crazy day on web sleuths because of this case. When they found those documents, because they are court documents, and we do allow discussion of court documents. You know, everybody went crazy, but then we've never had that happen. All of a sudden, they removed court documents, and it's like, okay, that means they must definitely they do not want them to be discussed is that because it's going to hurt the case we don't want to hurt the case but they were public documents there was no word like hey you can't discuss these so don't discuss them i I mean you know it's just crazy it's crazy it and it's and let me tell you why because it's because law enforcement and and uh the courts don't know how to deal with social media yet and if they would just put me in charge, make me king of the world for a little while, I could figure it out for them, but they won't do it. I've asked. I've asked people. I've really asked. They just won't do it. So let's just hope and pray these ladies are found safe. Again, it uh, doesn't look good. I just want to bring up Elizabeth Smart. Miracles can always happen, right, Scrappy Joe? Scrappy's here to say, Absolutely. Absolutely. He's a good boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay. Yeah, I know. You're hiding your your bone from Afi. I know. He's not going to get it. Don't worry. We've got battles. The whole time I'm doing these live streams, uh, Othram text, Bug Nugget the First, and Scrappy, there's always battles over their bones and things. You know, it's always going on behind the scenes. So it's, it's crazy. Okay. Uh, any questions on that case, anybody? I'm going to put the link up to websleuths.com. I have a, a very uh, lively discussion going on here. So hang on. Just a moment. Hello, Beth B. Good to see you, my dear. And Fluffy Muffin is here. And Amy007 and LA and Marilyn Landis. And I know I'm going to miss a whole bunch of people. The Thoris, there you are, my darling. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Back up, Jack. What? The Taurus. Even though I got rid of the haunted painting, there are some weird things going on. Oh, my God. You've got to come on Saturday if you feel up to it, my dear. Come on, woo-woo Saturday night. The Taurus had this horrible haunted painting that she purchased that she found a human tooth. It was in the frame, and it was haunted, and it, she said her so many crazy things were happening. She got rid of the painting, and now she's telling us... There's still weird stuff going on at her house. So on Saturday nights, if you're new, we do woo-woo Saturday night. And that's where you come and tell us your ghost story, your woo-woo story. So Thoris, please, if you can, we'd love to have you come on. Or if you can't make it, call me and let's record an interview with you and we'll play it Saturday night, okay? And I hope you're doing okay, my darling. I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, Annie T, hello, my darling. Red like wine again. Uh, Marilyn Landis, The Journey to Justice, Nana Lana, Amy 007, L.A., Fluffy B, Beth, uh, Fluffy Muffin, Beth B, and Brini is here, everybody. Red Like Wine again, Marlene Clausen, Nana Lana, Kathy Lynch, hello, Mama Mia, Journey to Justice. If I missed you, please forgive me, everybody. Kathy Lynch, hello. Sherry Quinley, hi there, Moonlight View, Brenda Bright, Candy Williams, and ah, the local my life. Hello, my darling. Uh, 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 uh. Anyway, okay, so hi everybody. Okay, let's get to Sebastian. There was a press conference today, and I'm going to put up a picture of Sebastian. And inside for one, tell us about this picture because you sent it to me. Okay, sorry. No, we love the frogs. We love them. Talk, somebody, talk while you're outside with the froggy frogs. Somebody from uh, Sebastian Rogers Group on in. 
put the post the picture in it and said it's a recent picture of him. I asked if I could use it, and they said please do. So, so this picture is more recent of the ones that you've seen. Now this is without his glasses, and we'll talk about his glasses here in just a moment. So, hold on here. Mm -mm -mm. Here it is, and he looks so grown up and ha I mean, he was a cute kid, but here he looks handsome. You know, he looks like a, a young man. So, um, yeah, I thought it was important for people to see what he looked like without the glasses. Right, I yeah. agree. I absolutely so, agree, hundred yeah. percent. Okay. So anyway, um, let's just keep this up here while we talk. There's a press conference today. I'm going to play you some of it. What is interesting is I think it was Nick Barris asked, have you cleared his stepfather and mother? And they, law enforcement refuses to use the word cleared. All they will say is, they have been, and they're emphatic about this. They have cooperated. They have, you know, no matter what we've asked them to do, they have done it very, very strong in their description of how Sebastian's stepfather, Chris Proudfoot, and his mother, Katie, have cooperated. But let's play a little bit of this press conference here first. Hang on here. Um, let's see here. Where is this one? That's not it. Just a minute. Yeah. Well, hell's bells. What is this one here? Hang on, guys. I thought I had it all set up. And of course, I don't. So just one. So if you could just chat with people in chat, that would be great. Are you there? Well, you say the frogs are loud. <laughs> oh, I said if you could chat with people in chat, but that's okay. okay. I've got I've got it. I've got it going okay. now. So we're good. We're good. We are good. Hang on, hang on. Let's see if we can. Just a second, guys. Hold on one second. There we go. Okay, this is the, where they talk about the parents. And by the way, uh, they have like Secret Service, TBI. I mean, they have called in the big guns to search for Sebastian. So, oh, exactly, Fluffy Muffin. Don't forget, we all need to personally apologize to Chris Proudfoot when the truth comes out. I will apologize. I have no problem doing that. But I will not apologize for calling him an abusive monster because he's admitted it to hitting his, his stepson with a belt. But yeah, I know. It sounds like Letitia Stouk. He really does. Okay, uh, this is where they, they talk about the parents. So hang on here. They have been cooperative throughout at the beginning of the investigation. They've been cooperative forgotten about him or is not pursuing this. The parents have been cooperative throughout at the beginning of the investigation. Um, they have pretty much done whatever law enforcement has asked of them. Um, at, at this point, we don't have any evidence. There is not any kind of an indication that there is a criminal element involved. Um, but we are keeping options open. We don't know what has happened. We don't know where Sebastian is right now. So we are pursuing any and all avenues. Um, we do want to caution some, uh, there are some media, social media elements out there who purport to have information that is direct from the in investigation. Um, I just want to reiterate that that is not the case. Um, the, some of the information that is being provided on some of the social media channels is inaccurate, incomplete. Um, we don't want this to damage the investigation. So we would just caution anyone who is following the case to just use some caution as to what you see and what you believe. Um, it, it's 
caused a bit of a distraction because a lot of what has been out there in some of the social media channels has been rumors and speculations and theories and some of that has been advanced and people have caught a hold of it as if it's what's really happening. Um, that has resulted in us getting information that is either, you know, like I said, distracting. It's uh, taking away time and effort from what the agencies agencies need to be doing as far as looking for Sebastian. Um, we have had so far, uh, as of this morning, 314 tips that have come. Um, I like your comments. Um, I, I put it up there and I, um, I forgot it. I, I forgot who said it, but they said, uh, pretty much cooperated. It doesn't sound like a hundred percent later on. One of the other spokespeople really says, absolutely. They've cooperated 100%, but yeah, they won't say cleared though. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, also, as somebody pointed out here, so has TBI found Summer Wells yet? Nope. Have not found Summer Wells. Again, that uh, Summer Wells, I can't even, she just walked out of her house, vanished, vanished. And there were several bad actors from YouTube that caused all kinds of problems. We don't know what happened to her. I don't know what happened to Summer Wells. And you think with all the technical equipment, with the heat sensors, and you know, you can fly over the helicopter with a heat sensor and the dogs and just nothing, nothing. Right. If I remember correctly, and forgive me if I'm not remembering this right, they tracked her, Summer Well sent down the driveway, it was a big long driveway, mm -hmm. both gone. So yeah. tell me, could she have gotten in a car? Absolutely. Absolutely. So anyway, back to Sebastian. Um, what needs to be asked and hasn't been asked or hasn't been answered anyway, when exactly was the last time that Sebastian was seen where it wasn't a member of the family or a member of Chris Proudfoot's family out in public or by friends? It was at a, the last I know of was a Saturday night at a Costco. Is that what we know? Um, I can't say I know that for sure. I do know that I'm checking into that. Yeah. So that's, I mean, oh, and yes, they did find glasses, but they will not say if they are uh, Sebastian's glasses. They just said we found glasses and they're investigating it. Mm. No, I mean, they could, I don't know why they couldn't say, yeah, they look exactly like his, but we're investigating to see if it's his prescription, but nothing. So I, I don't know what's going on with that, but there's more. So we're going to play a little bit more here. Let me get to it, my darlings. Hang on, everybody. Hang on. Did you used to sing Will to sleep? No, you know what I used to do to Will? What? Talk him to sleep. Oh. I had, yeah, I had to tell stories every night. He'd go, stories? Story, from the oh. time he was like three. And so I'd come up with these crazy stories. And then later he wanted, like when he was five or six, he wanted scary stories. So I'd say, I'd always say, with my son. Well, yep, that kids love it. So I'd always say, well, well, I read this on the internet, so I don't know if it's true or not. You know? And sometimes they would I would make him so scary. I'd look at him and he'd be like, you know, never get to sleep. And so he'd finally, finally go to sleep after I would talk to him and I'd be very slow and quiet. And I'd sit there and I'd start to get up and he'd go, stories, stories. Uh. Yeah, I did not see you. So you did the same thing with your son? Yeah, I'd tell them stories, and I had glow-in-the-dark finger puppets. Oh, how fun. Turn off all the lights. They were actually, I don't know if you remember glow worms. Oh, yeah. But they started making little plastic ones that you could hold and walk around like little figures. Mm -hmm. And they had holes in the bottom, so I'd stick them on my fingers and tell stories with each one in the dark. Oh, how fun. Oh, see, that's, 
don't tell Will. He'll feel so cheated oh. out of a childhood. <laughs> okay, don't tell him. He'll he'll be all upset. <laughs> no, that's a great idea. It was um, so fun. You guys do that with your grandkids, kids. You've got to do it. So fun. And you know what? I'd love to see pictures of your your babies when they were little. And oh, yeah, yeah, I'll bring send you some. I've got some great pictures of Will. In fact, I've shown the picture of him in his Bobby yep. uniform with his finger up his nose on stage. That's <laughs> one of my favorites. It's such a cute picture, though. It is. And then I've got a picture of him. He's in this kitchen sink. He's maybe one and a half, and he's got his arms out, and he's smiling, and he's covered in spaghetti sauce. Aww. I've got a, I'll find that one. That one's on here somewhere. I'll find it one night and show it to you. He was, I got to say, now I know I'm bragging, but yeah. literally people would stop us on the street and say, can we take a picture? Can we take a picture? Because he was yeah. just so flipping cute. And let me tell you why he was so cute. He looked like my mother had a baby with herself. He didn't look like me. He didn't look like my husband. He looked like my mom. Aww. And she was beautiful. So, yeah. So, But thank you. I will uh, send uh, or show some pictures. But anyway. Okay. So back to Sebastian. <laughs> Oh no, and I do I want to see pictures of your your kids too and your grandkids. Come on now. Come on. Okay. <laughs> pick it up. Pick it up, girl. Pick it up. Okay. So anyway, back to Sebastian. Well, we're gonna play this part here um from the press conference. And I want you to listen very carefully to this. Hang on here. Where is it here? Uh oh. Uh oh what? I this can't I was searching online. Now I can't find the stream yard. Oh, shite. I'll have to log mm -hmm. back in. I'm in, but I'll have to go back in. Okay. Go ahead. Continue. Okay. <laughs> okay, dokie. Okay, dokie. Okay, this is going to be hard to hear, but um, he's asking, I think he's asking if the parents have been cleared. Hold on. I've got to, uh, I got to just hang on here. We're going to share this. So listen carefully. No, sir. Two questions. If I may, have you ruled out Sebastian's mom that that involvement in this case? And as a follow up, have you cleared their alibi? Okay. He says, Have you ruled out the mom and the stepdad in this case? And as a follow up, have you verified their alibi? I think that's what he said. Okay. So here's his answer. I think the TBI said it best. They've been nothing but cooperative with law enforcement since day one. I think TBI said it best. They've been nothing but cooperative since day one. That wasn't the question. The question was, have they been cleared and have you verified their alibi? Okay, let's just, I'm going to back it up here so we can hear the whole thing again. Okay, here we go. I think the TBI said it best. They've been nothing but cooperative with law enforcement since day one of this investigation. There is no evidence to support foul play on the part of Sebastian's parents. Does that mean that it's interfering at all with your investigation? Is this changing possibly the avenues of communication? No, sir. You mentioned uh, in your last talk you can have uh, Robert Sloan, who wrote that the case has some validity. Have your glasses been found within the past few days? Can you confirm that? There were some glasses found in the past few days. We are still investigating. And on the case of Mayday, um, have you found their, how was that coordination happening? Have you found their work helpful in their coordination with them or that The Cajun Navy is operating independently. They have not reached out to us. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up, Jack. I did not realize that. The Cajun Navy is operating independently and have not reached out to us. Now, that's interesting, and let me tell you why. Uh, working with Mark Class and his search team, and if I'm not mistaken, Tim Miller of Texas EquiSearch, I think. I certainly don't want to speak for them. But usually the rule is we come in when law enforcement requests us. But did you hear this? He said that the Cajun Navy is operating independently. I've known that. That's part of why there's been issues and stuff. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. So hang on here. I'm going to, I'm going to back up and it's hard to hear the question, but you can tell the question by the answer. So let's just listen to this little part again. Okay. Hang on here. Okay. 
Yeah. No, sir. Uh, in your last uh, recent evidence, uh, we heard from the rumors that the state has some validity that there were glasses found within the past few days. Can you confirm that? There were some glasses found in the past few days. Were, have you been able to identify that they were in fact? We are still investigating. Okay. And on the page of Mayday, uh, have you found there, how was that coordination happening? Have you found there were helpful in transporting engineers in or out of the The Cajun Navy is operating independently. They have not reached out to us. One of the things that I really appreciate they've done is print flyers and keep Sebastian's face out there. Uh, it's my hope. The question was, I think, basically, have they been helpful or, helpful or not? And he says one of the things they've done is print flyers and keep Sebastian's face out there. They didn't mention they were helpful with the search, which I find interesting. Let's continue. That one day somebody sees something and calls in and this case breaks wide open and we find Sebastian. They've claimed they've received threats. To your knowledge, have they filed any police reports or reports to the Sheriff's Department documenting any of these alleged threats? No, sir. Uh, they asked about people receiving threats in the case. Has anybody filed any police reports about the threats? And he said no. They would have to call the police and report them. My hope and prayer is that Sebastian is still alive, yes. Uh, we're going to continue to work on this investigation to follow up every tip and lead that comes in. Uh, some of this may revert back to us going over some things that we've already done for the sixth, seventh, or eighth time. Uh, a fresh set of eyes never hurt anything. We're, we're going to continue to work to find Sebastian. Has the story been changing at all? Or have you consistently talked with people in a regional for a second time possibly? There is no evidence to support foul play. Are there any active occurrences that you have to report? We have tips called in daily. Regardless of their legitimate legitimacy, we're going to follow up on them. Will there be any other agencies who will be meaningfully helping with those efforts to lead things? I'm, I'm certain there will be. You met with the uh, biological father and mother this past week. Um, is that at their request, your request? Um, is that just re interviewing them again? That was at the request of law enforcement. Uh, we it's not uncommon to talk to the family in investigations like this. I've got time for one more question. Just overall, how has this investigation impacted the moral health at your department, especially with all the changes going on right now? Let me put it to you like this. If my kid was missing, this is the team I'd want on it. Uh, the men and women of the Summer County Sheriff's Office, of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, the FBI partners, the other local agencies, the Secret Service, everyone who's had a hand in this case is doing everything they can to find Sebastian. Morale's high. We are here and we are dedicated. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for keeping. Uh, I want to read what Susie B. put up. United Cajun Navy has lied and lied. They said they were working with Ellie. They are scammers. I have been hearing complaints about them. Now, I, see, I know nothing about them. And I've heard there's several uh, Cajun navies, like different organizations with that name. Uh, have you heard anything insightful one? Oh, yeah. Just I've heard that there's one group of them that are scammers. Um, mm -hmm. Here's another comment that says that that's not it. Okay. From Susie B. UCN's one. leader said they knew where Sebastian is, but can't get to him. What? When did they say that? Okay, there's, that's, there's that's, a lot of crap going on. It's ridiculous. That's just stupid. Sorry, guys. I gotta, I gotta start to take off the layers here. Who knows where it'll end up by the end of the night? <laughs> you may need therapy by the time this is over. <laughs> no. Okay, Might be done already. I know you do. <laughs> watching, watching this live stream. You all gonna need therapy. Uh, CCB, <laughs> can you tell me where that comment was made? Because if that was actually made by UCN and not just I heard UCN said, if it is an actual black and white, here it is on you know on paper typed in somewhere. 
no, that's just, that's, that's obscene. That, that's just obscene. That makes me so angry. Uh, can you give me a little more information about that? Yeah, see, I don't know much about that one particularly. I know you're asking her. But yes. on this case and the missing moms, I'm going to be really deep diving tomorrow mm -hmm. on both of these because, okay. I mean, we've deep dived on Sebastian already, but some other right. elements to that case, yeah. Exactly. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> makes her and that's right anger makes me take my clothes off people don't get me don't get me mad you're gonna be frightened for life absolutely frightened um yes they are legit there are legit cajun navies united cajun navy is not legit it was a recorded phone call with todd terrell leader of ucm okay do you know where that phone call was played i would like to hear that um, I would love to hear that phone call. I would like to play it. Moonchild says, I heard there's audio tape of them saying his body is on federal land and they can't get to him. Okay. And that, see, that's what I mean. I, I know that there are people that have heard about it. Exactly. But I would like to find the actual audio the tape. Yeah. yeah. The source. Okay. Modine said it was on Twitter. Okay. Whose Twitter feed was it? Is the Cajun United Cajun Navy was it on their Twitter feed? Um, you know, just let me know if you can. That would be great. Oh, Michelle After Dark. I love Michelle After Dark. She's great. Oh, um, oh. what? Right. Nothing. I'm not saying anything at all. Okay. Well, what I've heard of her, she's great. <laughs> she was, you know, but um, another channel asked a caller to email the call. Okay. Um, Oh, Susie B says, I heard the phone call myself. Hold on. What, what, what? Wrong one. Uh, I can go on and on about this group. I heard it on Twitter. If you can find it, Susie B, you will be my hero. I'm putting okay. my um, the ways they can get a hold of me in chat right now. Thank you. Because I would like to get a copy of that phone call. If they're saying he's on federal land and they can't get to him, what does that even mean? What I mean, is it like, is it Area 51 and there's guards there? I mean, come on. What the hell are they talking about? If they say something like that and don't follow up with, and here's why, and don't go to the police, you heard the law enforcement say they haven't been in touch with them. Oh my God, you guys, this makes my head explode. It makes me take my clothes off. So we need to calm down <laughs> here. Just need to calm down. So it's, you need to play the song. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> yeah. Woo, baby. Woo, baby. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. The dream to justice, federal land. You need a camping pass. What's the deal? I mean, I know there's federal land that is obviously blocked off. You can't get into Area 51, people. I don't think that's what they're talking about. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe it's a federal waterway. You know, maybe it's a federal body. I mean, but what a what a an irresponsible thing to say. You have Sebastian's loved ones out there desperate for him. Oh, we know where he's at. We just can't get to him. Really? Okay. Have you talked to law enforcement? Have you talked? How the hell would they know where he's at? Yeah. And it's exactly. Okay. Uh, let's just hypothetically say, you know what you're talking about. Whoa. Good job. United Cajun Navy. For God's sakes, call law enforcement and say, here's where he's at. And here's why I know. So, okay. Scrappy Joe. Authy is not going to take your bone away. Okay. authy has got his own bone somewhere. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Okay. I know you. Okay. Everybody just chill. They're just staring at each other, you know, and they sit there and growl and go nuts. Yes. So, okay. Now, see, I have not heard they put the house up for sale. Okay. Um, Bev, do you, can you tell me where that is published? Because I, I, you guys, I'm not trying to be rude and I appreciate the information, but I've heard blah, blah, blah. We really need to find out where this okay. stuff is being said so we can look into it and, and verify it. Okay. I've never heard that their house is up for sale. So, oh, that's true. You're right, Ange. Uh, if it is on a, a reservation, they have their own law enforcement and okay, then go to, um, oh, 
Okay, Bev. I'm sorry that I need more than just that. I, and I appreciate you letting that me isn't know. any information at all. Yeah. That's yeah. And I nothing that comes you. there. Can you believe you just, you just be very, again, as they said in the press conference, be very careful of what you hear on social media, YouTube channels. We always state, this is a rumor. We don't have any way to verify this. You know, that's why we bring it up to ask you guys to see if you know. Okay. But when people make statements like this and it's not in mainstream media, I'm very, very hesitant to believe it because mainstream media, they want the juicy stuff. Okay. They want to get the scoops. If their house was up for sale, don't you think it would be everywhere? That's the thing you have to remember when people come up with these incredible, uh, you know, bits of information and nobody else has it. You have to step back and go, what's going on? If their house was really up for sale, it would be everywhere. First of all, you could find probably find it on Zillow. Or well, Zillow. we could find out in two seconds if yeah. it is well. Because, yeah. you know, we can't say who, but we have people working with. Right. We you have, know, we have, and you can say it. I can't. Say well, it. I, well, I'll tell you. We have magical people that work with us. They're magic. Uh, we don't like to <laughs> say how magical they are, but they, they know they're magic people. That's all I can tell you. No, I mean, uh, I, but again, this would be public knowledge. Okay, Scrappy Joe. Okay, Offy, don't just stare at him. He's just staring at him, like right on his nose, just staring at him. They do this just to drive me nuts. This goes on constantly while I'm trying to do a live stream. It's like having two toddlers just punching it out all the time. Um, well, exactly. Heather, thank you. It is not listed for sale. If it was, it would be everywhere. You'd see it online. People would be losing their minds. Oh, yeah. Listed for sale. And this is, this. you know what? I'm going to, this is a good little lesson for us to learn. Okay. I'm about to have a nervous breakdown. Scrappy Joe. Uh, Stop. Just give me the dog. And you know, it'll be all gone. <laughs> <laughs> Mothroom text, Bug Nugget the first. Leave him alone. Oh, wait. No, wait, wait. That's not right. You've got two. That no wonder he's staring at you. <laughs> you little stinker, you had his. Uh, okay, okay. This, and Heather, thank you for bringing this up. Okay, and Bev, uh, I this is not anything against you. I, in fact, I am grateful that you said this because this gives us a chance to talk about situations like this. If you hear of a big juicy piece of information on a YouTube channel. And there are YouTube channels out there that um, have thousands and thousands of people in their chat, hundreds of thousands of subscribers, and they are no good. I'm not going to mention any names right now, but if they say something like this, the house is for sale. And that's the only place you've heard a big piece of information like that that's easy to find out you know they are not telling you the truth, okay? We, if that house was for sale, like I said, it would be everywhere. It would be explosive. You know, Webster's, people might be getting confused because they left and went to Memphis. Well, yeah, but... But it doesn't mean the house was for sale, but exactly. they left but, and they talked about why, you know. Right, and that's a huge leap. They left, so, oh, their house is for sale. Again, Bev, this is not your fault. This is the fault of the person that you heard it from. So um, just just know that this isn't on you. Uh, again, everybody, that's the thing you have to think of is like I had somebody, this is a long time ago, say, yeah, Summerwell's body was found back in March of, you know, uh, oh, 2022. Jesus. Do you remember that? Yeah, you sent me this thing. You told me her body had been found. Yeah. And I was because freaking out. I'm like, what? I was freaking out too. Somebody sent me this thing that said her body, it looked like a, a real uh, newspaper or like a, you know, mainstream media article. I'm like, oh my God. And I'm freaking out. Well, no, it was just somebody's blog that made to look like uh, a mainstream media outlet. And, and I had what I, what I didn't do, I didn't follow my own rule. I didn't stop and go, okay, it would be all over mainstream media if Summer Wells had been found. 
you know, and that's what you have to remember. If there's big information out there and it's coming from one source and nobody else, don't believe it. Google is your friend. Google it and see. So uh, I, if the house was up for sale, we would know uh, Journey to Justice. That was just something that a YouTuber said that has not had anything to back it up. I don't think they, uh, I don't think Chris Proudfoot and his wife would do something that stupid. I really don't, you know, so, uh, but oh I can't. here's one. That, I knew it. I knew it. Gazing at the moon. I knew it. Thank you. So Elvis is alive, people. See? He didn't fall off the toilet. <laughs> Thank you, gazing at the moon. I knew it. You heard it here first, people. Yeah, heard it here first. So, uh, Susie B, you can send the link to. Oh, I gave her my email. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. Yes, that's what that's what mainstream media said. Whoops. Uh, you're right. They well, one of the reasons they left town, they said, they were getting a lot of death threats, and they had to go back to Chris's work. That was the other thing. Um. Again, a lot of people criticized them for at least his mother, Sebastian's mother, not staying at the house. I would never leave the house unless it was unless I knew somebody was at the house and I was searching. I would never leave the house empty. I, I mean, I couldn't, you know, and I go back to Sharon Rosha, Lacey Peterson's mom. They had to uh, practically drag her out of Lacey Peterson's house. They she couldn't sleep. She couldn't eat. I mean, she was just a mess for months. And she was like, what if Lacey comes home and I'm not here? What if she comes home and I'm not here? I mean, that's all she could think of, you know? So, yes, uh, Journey to Justice, we played that last night. Um, we played that. It was a, they were in a game room. Now, the sister. Uh, from what I understood, Journey to Justice, that was Chris Proudfoot's sister. Again, it's one of those things where that's what people are telling us. We haven't confirmed it. But whoever it was, they were snapping at Sebastian. And it made me mad because he was just trying to help. You know, he was just trying to help. And um, it really made me mad, whoever it was snapping at him. Because, like, I, I just want to say, what a bee, really. You know, he's a kid. He was trying to help. And it was this, you know, game with lights. And it was noisy. And it was clicking and clacking. And, uh so, uh, yeah, that's right. Supposedly, Annie T, allegedly, Elvis died off. <laughs> allegedly. So, anyway, um, it uh, it really, it when I saw that video, it upset me because my mind went right back to Chris Proudfoot. I run a strict household. My household's very strict. Yeah, I hit him with a belt. Hit him with a belt. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, uh, Child Protective Services came and opened the door and we laughed and she apologized to me and told Sebastian, you know, not to, uh, you know, when you tell lies like this, people get in trouble. I mean, he was just all happy and proud of himself that he hit him with a belt. And it sounded like, well, the way he told the story, the way Chris Proudfoot told the story was he hit Sebastian with a belt because he didn't have a belt. Oh, I just hit him once over the, over his clothes. I don't care. That's, you're an animal. You're disgusting. It makes me sick. However, if you'd like to come on this live stream, I promise you, I will be very polite. Even though I'm be very angry, I will be very polite. And I will let you talk, but I will ask you the tough questions. But it makes me angry that you hit a child. You hit a child. What a bully. Ugh. It makes me so angry. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Susie B. We really appreciate it. I don't, you know what, LA, I wondered that. Did he hit Riley with his missing belt? Probably, probably. Oh, gazing at the moon, that's such a perfect um, way to put it. This is like playing telephone. You know, we did that, you know, when we were younger. You would tell a story to somebody, they tell it to somebody, and before you know it, the whole story had changed. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't anything malicious. It's just, it's what people hear, you know? Yeah. It's what people hear. So. And I just want to say, you meant to say Sebastian, not Riley, so people don't oh. get confused. Yeah. Uh, did I say Riley? I don't know why yeah. I said Riley. I'm sorry, because my brain is, um, 
is I'm an old bat. That's my excuse. What's your excuse? Uh, yeah. Ex oh, Bev, that's a great, great comment. Chris Proudfoot on Nancy Grace was a different person than he was on all those other YouTube channels where he was all jovial and just so proud of himself. Give me the tough questions. Come on, ask me the tough questions. Yeah. Nancy, Nancy put him in his place, man. She just, those eyes and she's taking notes and I'm, I'm just screaming. I'm like a cheerleader, you know, just going right on Nancy. Just he, oh, I love her for that. Well, Sienna, um, now law enforcement has said emphatically that there's no sign of foul play. I don't know how they can say that because there's no sign of anything. There's no well, sign. Well, they just said there's no sign at this time. At this time, right. Yeah, so that could change tomorrow. Exactly. Now, if the timeline is to be believed, everybody, Chris Proudfoot, Sebastian's stepfather, was literally three hours away when Sebastian disappeared. That's why it's important to find out when the last time Sebastian was seen by somebody other than somebody in the family. As far as we can tell, it was when they went to Costco. I think it was on Saturday night, the Saturday before he went missing. Okay. Supposedly on Sunday, he visited a cousin's house, but Again, we don't know. So, um, but yeah, there's uh, a lot of people are thinking what you are thinking. Again, this timeline, he wasn't there. Okay. He had already left, I believe, unless he left Sunday. And see, that's just it. We don't know. We don't know. But the fact that uh, Nina who is in that awful custody fight with Chris Proudfoot that's been going on for over five years now um, for their daughter, Faith. She said in an interview that she spoke with, and we played this, she spoke with Seth, who is Sebastian's father. And Seth said that Sebastian was getting ready to come and live with him. Okay. Let's, let's think this out for just a moment. All right. <clears throat> you have somebody that runs a strict household and that brags about hitting a child with a belt. What else happens in that household? Are there things that they don't want to be let out? If Sebastian goes and lives with his father, is it possible that more could come out? Now, he went to his father's house all the time alone and, you know, didn't seem to be any problem. But, um, Sebastian's father, Seth, did say that they made him wear pull-ups. Pull-ups. I, I don't, I, there is so much we don't know. We just know these little bits and pieces. It's like a 12,000 piece puzzle and we have a hundred pieces, you know, and we're trying to see what, what is what. So, and, and hold on, I'm going to put this up. This is, this is our good wonderful friend, uh, Jeannie Phipps. And this is a great, uh, a great comment. She says, I just keep wondering how we got out of the house. All of the doors were locked and nothing showed up on the neighbor's camera that faces the house. The dogs picked up no scent from a barefoot boy. Again, we are only going by what Katie and Chris Proudfoot have told us. Okay. And as far as all the doors locked, that's what I'm talking about. She said all the doors were locked and he left without his shoes on. We do know that according to what was told to Seth, there were no hits. The dogs, that Sandy dogs had no hits. How can that be on a barefoot child? I don't understand. I don't understand. To me, it is... Um, it's just very, like I said, so many questions. Hold on. There's another one here. Um, Angela Conley says, I watched an interview with Seth saying it was swapping. So staying with him and visiting mom every second weekend. So, yeah. I, yeah. He was going to go live with his father permanently is what I understood. So um, 
I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Ange says, does anybody know when Chris left for Memphis? We're not clear on it either. We're not clear. Was it Saturday night or was it Sunday morning? Supposedly on Sunday evening, there was a two to three hour phone call between Chris and his wife. Okay. That, and that I'm sure the police can pick up, but the police aren't telling us anything. That's just it. They're not telling us anything. So, so yeah, they could be, it could be swapping, like you said, and maybe this is something they do. He gets 50% at dad's house, then 50% at mom's house. But he was getting ready, from what I understand, to go to his father's house. So maybe that was the custody arrangement. So, um, you know, child support, it was 50 50. Yeah, that could be. That absolutely could be, uh, wild man's mom. No question. Let's see. Beth B says, in my opinion, the money for care of a disabled child would move from stepdad to bio dad. And that it could be there could be money there provided by the state. You're right, Beth B. Absolutely. And it could be whoever has custody of um, Sebastian at the time gets money from the other parent. You're absolutely right. Very. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Again, we just don't know. So. Wild man's mom. I think you're right. I think law enforcement is on the same page that we are here and they just can't say it. They just can't say it. Um, hold on. I want to just a second here. Somebody was talking about the codes. Let's see. Uh, Bev says Seth said no child support payments for Sebastian. Uh, he may have said that, uh, did you hear him, Beth, or was that something that somebody said? I'm not, I see. I don't know. I'm not sure. What they say? But Seth said no child support payments for Sebastian. Oh. Somebody talked about the codes. Hold on. Just a second here. Um, Just a second. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Um, Seth said in an interview they did not pay child support, that they just paid expenses as they occurred. Also, no SSDI. Okay. Hold on here. Um, but somebody was talking about the codes. Where was that? That could have been for the door locks, that one? Well, yeah. Yeah. But see, I didn't know they had codes. Yeah, Katie said it on um, the Nancy Grace show. Oh, she did? Okay. Mm -hmm. So they, oh, that's right. She said that they both had the code and his sister had the code, right? Yeah. So, um, Charisma, we don't know if somebody saw stepdad at work. I'm sure the police know. I'm sure the police know. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, and child support, you know, obviously the rules on that differ from state to state. But like here in California, if you're the custodial parent and like they see the other parent on the weekend, mm -hmm. even if you have 50-50 custody, it doesn't matter. The custodial parent that has him most of the time will receive child support Right. if they went for child support because you don't have to. For example, my ex and I, we raised our child without ever going to court, and we just had a deal between us. You and know, so we didn't you have do to that. do that. Yeah. Now, in Utah, if you go through the courts for a divorce like my husband and I did, one of us had to receive child support, and, and he gave me child support because he was the one that was making the most money. And, you know, so, but we both shared custody equally. And maybe yep. Seth has been told not to say anything about money if there was money. I don't. I don't know. Again, we just don't know. We just don't know. So, um, wild man's mom. Seth was on Josh's. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> anyway, let me just go on to. to, to, to. NET, did it rain that night? I don't know if it did or not. 
I don't know. I'm sorry. Did I remove a, um, a, a comment that you put up? I didn't mean to. No, you didn't. Okay. okay. Let me just go down here real quick. Okay. Golden Fire says, Seth in an interview also said they make their own decisions on where Sebastian stays. Seth was taking him <clears throat> at their request so people could take care of themselves. So you're saying, <clears throat> excuse me, Seth said that he was taking Sebastian at the request of Chris Proudfoot and his wife. And welcome, Golden Fire. Good to see you. Good to see you. See, I would love to have Seth on. We've been trying to invite Seth and, you know, to let him know that we don't make money off of these live streams. Websleuths.com doesn't have advertising. Uh, so, you know, and Seth, we can reach, you know, we have over 200,000 registered members. That's, and we have more people that visit WebSleuth all the time, WebSleuth.com. So <clears throat> we can help really get your word out, Seth. If anybody knows, um, if anybody knows Seth or knows how to get in touch with him, we've been, we've been trying, haven't we, Insightful One? Yes. And that, so. that's for the other person. Um, I don't know what state he lives in. I think Seth lives in the same. I think he lives in Tennessee, doesn't he? Okay, Journey to Justice uh, said that um, Chris called Seth and asked him if he would take his son full time. That's interesting. Okay. That's very interesting. What was the problem? Because Seth didn't have a problem with his son. But... Chris Proudfoot is hitting him with a belt, making him wear pull-ups. Oh, because they're having marriage problems. Interesting. And that's what Seth said, right? That's what Seth said. So, um, interesting. Uh, Ange says Seth lives in Clarksville, Tennessee. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. I actually just found out. So thank you. Thank you. It's good to have so, double confirmation. Very good. <clears throat> okay. So let's, let's unpack this as they say. Seth gets a call from Chris. It says, will you take Sebastian full time? And of course he will. And somehow they find out they're having marriage problems. Well, what happens with marriage problems? There's lots of stress. What happens with stress with people that don't know how to control their temple, temper? They explode. You guys, this just, this, I just have a pit in my stomach. Um, my friend and I were talking today and what we're really hoping, and this could be, we are really hoping that somebody came and got Seth because they knew that was a bad situation. And they met Seth somewhere. They got him somehow got him out of the house. And maybe he's somewhere where there's no internet and he doesn't know what's going on. That would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. Yes, the whole family suffers when there's marriage problems. No question. Um, Peekaboo Cockatiel says, my, my sister lives in Clarksville, Tennessee. Uh, tell her to go knock on Seth's door and say, hi, Trisha says, hi, she'd love you to come on. Interesting. And then uh, Journey to Justice says, why was it Chris calling and making that discussion? Yeah, why wasn't it uh, the mom? Very interesting. Very interesting. Mm. Mm -mm -mm, you guys. Okay, let's see. Cocapelli said, Miss Midwest EquiSearch was on duty, Ron, and said they've been asked to help. Good. That's great. See, that's usually how it works, is law enforcement reaches out to other private search agencies. And um, that's good. That's good to hear. 
Is JDR here? Good to see you, JDR. Yeah, Blonde PT, I'm with you. Especially when I sit here and talk it out with you all, my stomach just starts to sink lower and lower and lower. It just, ugh. Ah. Candy Williams, that is what Chris and uh, Katie are saying, that Chris was out of town and the last person to see him was his mother, Katie. Now, how can I say this delicately, insightful one? Um, we have found out some things about uh, Katie that we're not going to go into, but it's, it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's ugly and it has to do with a past divorce. And I don't think it has anything to do with Sebastian, his disappearance, but, um, yeah, the only thing technically it has anything to do with is possible, possibly her state of mind. Right, and right. why maybe some things would be acceptable in her home as opposed to others, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. So, um, yes, Katie was married before to Seth, Sebastian's father. And uh, you know, on this channel, we just don't tell things just so we can get a bunch of subscribers. And a bunch of people in chat. We could, but we try. We try and do what's right. We're not always perfect. If there is a mistake, it's insightful one's fault at all what? times. I always know that. Yeah, but <laughs> no, it's my fault. It's my fault. It's always my fault. Trust me. Always my fault. Um, but uh, you know, we just sometimes it's a fine line. It's a balance between information that should come out and information that doesn't need to come out. So, and a men, my darling, I think it's very clear. She says that Chris Proudfoot and his family control everything. This stirs my PTSD. I understand. In fact, Seth's mother made a very bold statement. I'm going to read it to you on, it was, this was on Facebook, wasn't it? Yes. This was on Facebook. Let me find it here. Um, and she made this the other day. And we posted it. I don't have it handy to put up, but this was on Facebook. And she says, I want to thank Nina Gomez for having the courage to stand up to the Proudfoot Bower Sox family. Now, Nina Gomez is the uh, woman that is in that terrible custody battle with Chris Proudfoot uh, with their daughter, Faith. And she went on uh, a live stream called Trev Time, and it was heartbreaking what she has been through with Chris Proudfoot and this uh, custody battle. Anyway, Robin Rogers goes on to say, it is important to shed light on the type of people we're dealing with here. I just want to restore what I have said before. We, the Rogers family, are not afraid of Chris, Katie, or any member of the Proudfoot Bowersox family we will find our grandson. We will prosecute anyone and everyone involved. You can follow us around and try to intimidate us. You can, we are relentless in our searching for justice for Sebastian and ultimately for Faith, her siblings, and Nina. Stand by. We are on our way back to Tennessee for an Easter miracle. Thank you all for your continued support and prayers. Now let's find Sebastian. Now remember, Nina talked about how Chris and Chris's family followed her relentlessly and did horrible things to her. Uh, and it appears that Seth's mother is saying that Chris and his family apparently have been following them. That's, I don't think that's a, uh, I, I think that's what you can draw from that from that statement. So there's no love loss between those families. So, um, 
Let's see. Wild Man's Mom says, in my opinion, I feel like she had a high stress time and she made some very poor choices for her and his future. I think you could be very right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, Moonlight View, you're right. All opinions here are welcome. Is everything okay in chat? Does Mama need to come in here? Oh, now that's interesting. Hold on. I just read this and then I lost it. It said, and I don't even know who said it, that the pull-ups, because according to Seth, he was had to wear pull-ups at the house, that the reason why, the, uh, uh, an opinion as to why Sebastian wore pull-ups at Chris and Katie's house was because he was forced to stay in his room. That could be. Absolutely. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, Moonlight View says, all is well at Web Sleuth. <laughs> Let's see. Hold on one second here. Um, I'm going to read this first. Yeah, that's what I find strange. Chris acts like he's best friends with Seth, and there's no problems there whatsoever. Ah, crazy. Uh, Blonde PT said, could the reason UCN said they couldn't get couldn't get to him, a speculation related to him being on possibly um, a Proudfoot family property, maybe. But what worries me is law enforcement said in this press conference that UCN had not reached out to them. Now, why would they say something like that and not tell the uh, law enforcement? But every everybody, I want you to remember something. Please remember this. We're only going by what we are told, okay? And it's very little information. It's bits and pieces. And law enforcement is under no obligation to tell us the truth, all right? They may be telling us certain things that are not true for certain reasons that will become clear later. So there you go, journey to justice, locked in his room when Chris was home. Would that surprise anybody? It wouldn't surprise me at all. And Chris Proudfoot, I'd love you to come on again, even though I've been very vocal and have gotten angry while you're not here. Uh, I give you my word. I will be very respectful. And if I'm not, you can be just as rude to me, but I will be inside. One of you ever heard me to be disrespectful to a guest? No, I even had John Douglas on here, the FBI profiler. And we so disagree on the John Benet Ramsey case. And I was polite. I didn't, uh, he even kind of uh, did a little teasy thing with me about it and I didn't blow up. I could have, but I didn't because I was drunk, but don't tell anybody. No, I wasn't drunk. That's not true. I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. Thank That's you. I was so hoping like, you were <laughs> No, I mean, guys, if I have a guest on here, I am super polite, no matter who they are, because I want them to talk to me. So. Um, and thank you, LA. A lot of people have noticed that. I haven't been trying. I have been eating better. And I got to say, it's thanks to my one girlfriend. She has um, been so good at uh, showing me how to use supplements and minerals. And I can't, I, I mean, she saved me. I'm so lucky to have her in my life. Uh, she did amazing things for me. And, and I've started losing weight because I've been starting to eat better. I only eat half my weight in Burrito Supremes now at Taco Bell, instead of my full weight. That is really <laughs> with the weight loss. Gotta start somewhere. That's right, that's right. Modine, I would love Chris to be here. I would ask him the hard questions very politely, very polite. So, uh, Blonde PT, PT, I did, I started to watch the behavior panels review of the parents interview. I didn't get all the way through it, so I don't want to comment on it, but I love those guys. I really do. I'll try and find that and put it in the description. So, so yeah, Mary L, we can be brash with each other. We, see, see who outbrashes the other one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. Okay, let's see here. Um, ah, come on. There we go. Modine, just like Nancy, man, I, I would follow her footsteps the way she did that interview. That should be taught in a 
interview class, you know what I loved? And I've said this a million times. She'd go, mm-hmm, and look down and write something down. And you could just feel the squirminess mm -hmm. in, in Chris just going, what did I say? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. You know, totally different personality. Totally different. So. Oh, is that uh, Modine's uh, avatar is Amadeus? Is that who that is? Rockman Amadeus? Yeah. I can't see. It's the guy who played uh, Amadeus. I, Tom, somebody, I forgot his yeah, name. Yeah, it's Tom. I've yeah. Been his last name. I can't see it anyways to know. <laughs> Are you blind? Are you getting old and blind? Yeah, up close. I'm near, I've am i always been nearsighted. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I can't see up close very well. Oh, no. So it's... Well, it's a really cute picture. It really is. Um, yeah. About John Douglas, Annie T, uh, and John Benet Ramsey, uh, he did, I thought he was hired by the parents, but then later I heard he didn't take money, but he did early on go with the parents. And uh, I actually paid really good money to take a two-day seminar from John Douglas, like in 2001 years right. ago and i got to ask him a question about john benet because he was going on and on and on and this was before we knew very much mm -hmm. but it was obvious to a lot of people including investigators that there was no intruder i will say that there was no intruder so i got up and i said mr douglas what if you are wrong about john benet ramsey now keep in mind Everybody in this room was law enforcement or with a DA's office and me, the annoying housewife type at the time. And uh, I'll never forget. He went just like this, kind of jumped back. And he goes, well, uh, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe I am, but I don't think so. It, it shocked him. It shocked him. So, and just to be back up, John Douglas a little bit. He's not the only pro big time profiler that agrees with that theory he has. So. I know. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But I have to say, he was gracious enough. I mean, yeah. he knows how I feel about John Bonet, and he's been gracious enough to come on this show twice, and we've had a blast with him. He's just wonderful. He is absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So, let's see. Uh, Oh, oh, this is so sweet. SS, is this PSYOPs? Is that how that's pronounced? That's what it so looks like. Very, free, very few true crime channels anymore, personally. The community feels different, but Web Sleuths is always solid. Thank you. We try to be, um, we are very, uh, we, we just want the facts. And WebSleuths.com, the true crime discussion forum, you know, I was just talking with one of the mods earlier today. And uh, gosh, they work so hard to keep things factual and to keep the drama out of there. And um, it's crazy. So, and by the way, we will be doing a John Benet Ramsey show here in the near future. It's going to be good. It's going to be very good. Uh, we're going to, again, take the people that doubt and show you. The, the only thing we really, I feel that we can show you is the evidence that says there was no intruder and the evidence that shows Patsy wrote the note. I don't know what happened to John Benet Ramsey. I have no idea. But those two things we can show with the evidence that has been released, we can show, I believe, very firmly those two items. So, okay. Uh, what no oh my gosh you know wow. they, thought, they thought her remains were in a canal remember in yeah. a canal in a barrel um did you hear the story breaking stacy peterson's sister believes she's found her remains in an illinois canal stacy peterson drew peterson's wife mm -hmm. his second wife that he murdered and they have never been able to find her body now he's in prison for the murder of his first wife that they ruled an accident it was such a joke. He's been convicted. Stacy went missing. And I remember it was Drew's, I think his second cousin, who said Stacy, he helped Drew put Stacy in a barrel and took her out to a canal. 
he said that. I'll never forget that. And now, oh my gosh, that is so great. It's on News Nation. Um, Insightful One, would you mind looking at that real quick? And then we'll we'll wrap it up. If you could find it, that'd be great. Yeah. And just to say, though, Stacy was his fourth wife. His fourth wife, right. But he, oh. he second wife he murdered, but his fourth wife. Well, his third wife he murdered, Kathleen. Right. And then the fourth wife went missing. Yeah. Stacy. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I'm saying he murdered her. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there, I, I think I can safely say that. So. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if they're at bullseye. I don't know if they're in a barrel or not. Um, it, Journey to Justice, do you know if they said it was she was in a barrel? But that's what the cousin said. And I remember the barrel was in the canal. So, oh, I hope that's, I hope that's true. I no, hope that's true. Wait, I'll email this to you right now. Okay, is it the... Uh, What's on News Nation? Hold on. Yep. Okay, just a second. I'll read this. Just a second here. Yeah. There we go. Okay, from News Nation. Stacy Peterson's sister believes she's found her remains in an Illinois canal. Cassandra Kales, the sister of Illinois, Stace, Illinois woman Stacy Peterson, who went missing in 2007, believes she's found her sister's remains. At the time of her disappearance, Stacy Peterson, then 23, had been married to former uh, police sergeant Drew Peterson, who was 49 at the time. Stacy Peterson has never been found, while Drew Peterson was found guilty of killing his third wife, Kathleen Savio. Uh, that's a do do do. Drew Peterson and Savio had been divorced when her body was found in a bathtub while the death was initially ruled an accident. Stacy Peterson's case prompted police to take another look at what happened to Savio. Ultimately, Peterson, now 70, blah, blah, blah. Um, all these years, Kales has never stopped trying to find out what happened to Stacy. Uh, Kales shared an underwater video of what she says is her sister's skeletal remains with Crime Nation. The remains were found in a canal in Lockport. Um, authorities searched but did not find Stacy Peterson. Previous searches in the area had also been unsuccessful. By searching with sonar, Kale said she and her team were able to get live video, which shows an upside down human skull with two eye sockets filled with silt. It's somebody, whether it's my sister or not, she needs to be brought home. Well, if they've got that, they should be able to go in and and find it. Let's see. They're showing the video right here. Let's see. Hold on. Oh, I see. Okay, hold on. I'm going to show this here real quick, okay? okay? Hang on. What state did Susan Powell live in? I'm trying to remember. Utah. Thank you. Okay, hang on here. Hang on. And then I'll put this link up in chat. Oh, come on. I don't want the damn commercial. Oh, my God. Just a second, guys. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry. Got to wait for the advertisement. Um, D -d -d -d, I'll sing, or if you want to read some comments in chat, I think that'd be better. SSS -S Psyops says JBR was definitely someone inside the family. Always thought the suitcase was meant to transport her the body out under the guise of attache case, but rigor sat in and they couldn't pull their plan off. Uh, no, the suitcase was um, not part of it. I don't believe, in my opinion. Okay, hang on here. Let me share this, but we'll talk more about that later. So hang on here. It's funny because my husband was just watching a show on Drew Peterson the other night. It's uh, murder in my family. So it's when the relatives talk, you know, with either the killer or the other relatives. Right, right. And um, Kathleen's sister was talking with Drew Peterson's children. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay, hang on here. Let's get this here. Just a second. 
account uh, on all of this breaking news, the woman who has not given up searching for her sister for 16 years. Uh, she joins us live now, Stacy's sister, Cassandra Kales. Uh, Cassandra, thank you for being with us. You have been relentless um, looking for your sister and what happened here. And this is a bombshell tonight, uh, the fact that that these remains have been found in the canal there where Alex was just standing. H how did this all come about, Cassandra? Walk us through it. Um, basically, I've never stopped. Um, we've had numerous sonar searches and back in 2007, um, November 19th in 2007, we found a female body, which was basically my sister, um, you could see the hair waving, the breasts and her legs, she was becoming buoyant and, but not buoyant enough to come to the top of the surface because she was weighed down. Um, she was at that location for three days. Um, state police were notified and they didn't, um, do anything um they they were sent everything they had okay everybody can you see that there's the eye socket the lower jaw again this is news nation so let me continue and i will make the screen uh bigger so you can see it so here we go the i'm gonna back it up me, just a little bit me and my team oh come on we were threatened to be arrested if we acted on what the heck oh not what stop Oh my gosh, what the hell is that? Good God. <laughs> oh my God. What the hell? Just a minute, hold on. Let's let this just go. Hold on, everybody. Good God. The hell, how the liver, it just came, that just came out of nowhere. Are you kidding me? Now what the hell is this? Really professional minute. there. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I've got a, I don't know what happened here. This is just the weirdest damn thing. We're just watching a video. And then boom. Oh my God. Okay, hang on here. What is this? No. Okay, this is this an ad? This is, sorry guys, got to wait for another ad. Just a minute. Why did I have to have that ad? Here we go. <laughs> Let me, okay, guys, we're just going to, I'm sorry. I'm not going to touch this video again. We're just going to play the whole thing. Again, this is uh, News Nation. This is Brian Enton probably filling in for um, uh, Banfield, Ashley Banfield. So hang on here. Let me get this. I'm not going to touch anything. I'm not going to rewind it. We're just going to play the dang thing. who has not given up searching for her sister for 16 years. Uh, she joins us live now, Stacy's sister, Cassandra Kales. Uh, Cassandra, thank you for being with us. You have been relentless um, looking for your sister and what happened here. And this is a bombshell tonight, uh, the fact that, that these remains have been found in the canal there where Alex was just standing. H how did this all come about, Cassandra? Walk us through it. Um, basically, I've never stopped. Um, we've had numerous sonar searches and back in 2007, um, November 19th in 2007, we found a female body, which was basically my sister. Um, you could see the hair waving, the breasts and her legs. She was becoming buoyant, and but not buoyant enough to come to the top of the surface because she was weighed down. Um, she was at that location for three days. Um, state police were notified and they didn't um, do anything. Um, they, they were sent everything, they had the coordinates and then me and my team, we were threatened to be arrested if we acted on anything. That's crazy. And after the third day, um, she was gone. And we just went on continuing searching. Then the spring of 2008, we expanded and continued. And we found her um, down the canal, uh, resting on the bottom. You can see decomp, not in that video. 
um, there's actually another image, um, and it's you can see decomp and the flesh um, going. You can actually see a fish um, above her body. She still had flesh, but she lost her eyes and her feet were gone. Um, it was kind of turning skeletal. Um, inform, inform the state police. Um, again, nothing. Um, I think I fought them for like a year, and then they just went out and did a blind dive one day and didn't even like re-sonar it. Then, um, it just, I, the technology keeps getting better and better and I looked for the best of the best and that's when I found the one and only sonar ROV and had it brought in from Alaska and that's what we got. And that was just out of that sheer luck. It had this incredible. Yeah, uh, sorry to interrupt you. I mean, I'm just looking at the images, Cassandra, and the fact that you had to find this sonar RV from Alaska to come down and that you were able to locate these remains, it is unbelievable. And I don't understand. I'm just trying to understand, like, what are the police doing? If you were able to locate the skull and other bones and you know where, where they are, I would think there'd be a dive team in the water tonight going to collect the remains. No. Like, what, what is going on? Good question. That image, that, well, that's actually live video you're looking at. You can see the silt moving around the, the grabber claw. Um, so basically, we had the ROV sitting on top, just in that position, sitting on the bottom. And I had called state police. I had called the state's attorney. They came out. They seen it. I even set up a tent because it was cold out um, and we showed them everything and then we just stood there and they just said, well, you expect us to come out tonight or to right now? And I just yeah. like pushed back. And then I had to call them every day. Then I called the FBI and then finally I got the FBI to come in three months later after I was on that. And they just kind of did a blind dive and floated around. I have that on video. They were all just floating on the top of the water hole the, the whole time. And then when I was there, they didn't even talk to me and they treat me like a criminal. So, Ugh. and then at the end, they told me that that area is cleared. So that area is cleared. Now I'm just trying to get some funds and get, get that equipment back. And um, they said it's clear. It's not, so there's no crime scene. I'll, I'll walk into state police with her skull in my hand. It, it, it's somebody's. It's not, I don't know. It's my sister. Real quick, this is News Nation that we're listening to talking about Stacy Peterson. This is her sister. But it's definitely somebody, somebody's loved one that needs to be coming home. So, so they say the area is cleared, but you've got the sonar RV there uh, with the images. Yeah. I mean, both of those things can't be true. And 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 they how far that away that could that, that have a floated? I mean, it didn't. It covers with. They said it was instantly. a rock. Yeah, they said that was a rock, and I actually have video footage of that. I said that's a rock? The ROV oh, my God. That we actually bumped the skull, and you could see the underside of the skull, like the, you know, the bottom of your skull. It fell off. But it gets re-silted so, over very quick. Oh, my God. There's that same one. Good God. <laughs> Good Lord. Why me? Why me? Why me? Uh, wow. Yeah, rocks don't have a jaw. I call me crazy, but they don't have a jaw. I just need to see something really quick here. Um, hold on. Yeah, this is today. This, I thought maybe it was older, but yeah, oh my gosh. That's just crazy. It is yeah. absolutely crazy. Well, anyway, we'll follow that, of course. And thank you, Journey Justice, for showing that. Listen, we got to get going. Please, everybody, be sure and check out dnasolves.com. Uh, we do not ask for donations here, but we do ask that you help uh, the dnasolves.com people fund their cases that they have. Uh, that cost 7500 bucks to do a DNA uh, test so they can find the loved ones of these remains and of these bodies that they're testing. I've just put the uh, link in, in chat and I'll put it in the description. If you like this 
live stream. Again, we don't ask for donations, but if you can donate even just a dollar to dnasolve.com to help them raise money for their DNA testing, that would be great. Okay, we are going to head out of here. I want to thank Moonlight View and Four Sons Mom. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody in chat tonight. We do appreciate it. Insightful one. Love you. Don't forget, I think Ping is going to do another live stream tonight. We are headed out right now, but we will be back tomorrow night, right? Insightful? Yes. We will be back at 1030 Eastern on Web Sleuths YouTube Live. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.